Hi, my name is James Griffiths. Welcome back to the channel and just wanted to mark the passing of Carl Wallinger from World Party, a band that has been uh, in my in my life for a great many years. This is uh, the album that I first cottoned on to, Bang, came out in 1993. It was Carl's third album as World Party. He'd already done you can see on the on the wall behind me there the first album Private Revolution and uh, and then the follow up Goodbye Jumbo both of which had achieved some success but this record was actually quite big and um there was a quite a big hit single from it uh Is It Like Today which I first heard actually on the Whispering Bob Harris show and uh, I thought it was beautiful it was a great combination of Beatles melody Bob Dylan lyricism and uh, a bit of a modern twist thrown in I think Carl was a bit of a Prince fan uh, so he was able to weave electronics into the band's sound this is a reissue of the record which unfortunately does not feature the original artwork not quite sure what I think about that cover. It's quite a nice sounding reissue. It's okay. You know how these reissues, they never quite seem to hit the spot. It's its not too bad. There are a couple of sound glitches on it which are annoying. But this came out a couple of years ago and I was pleased to get it because, um, you know, this album is a is an album which was, which was quite important to me, I guess, back in the 90s. And um, I have done a video on World Party already, so I'm not going to use this opportunity now to go through their career. I will link to it in the description below. It was about five years ago now I did a whole video on Carl and um, World Party's career and explained all the history of it, you know. He'd, um, he was from Prostatin originally, which is just down the road from where I'm from in North Wales. And he came to join the Water Boys. He was with them for a couple of albums, and then he made the break and formed this group, World Party, which was really just him and uh, you know whoever else he wanted to work with. Bit of a, a studio auteur, I suppose. And um, his style developed quite quickly on those first couple of albums. There was an eco theme running through his work, and that continued on this record. But I think on this album. I think he really did find his voice. I don't want to suggest that he didn't have a voice on Goodbye Jumbo, because he definitely did. But on this album, there was a definite sophistication in the songwriting. There's a wonderful selection of tracks. I mean, the single, Is It Like Today, it's got a very mysterious sound. And Carl did a great job, I think, of not going too deeply into contemporary production techniques. There is some production on here, there is some 90s production, but it's got a quite a timeless sound, quite a mysterious sound. He used lots of vintage instruments from the 60s, and the way he put the music together, it really conjures up those kind of great records from the 1970s. Think, you know, Something Anything by Todd Rundgren, flashes of Stevie Wonder coming through, a very rich complex sound picture, you know, a tapestry of sounds, great, great headphone music, very layered, but just beautiful chords, beautiful um, harmonies, uh, you know, some Beach Boys things happening, and a very mysterious lyric actually in that song as well. I think there's probably an eco theme coming through. The song keeps coming back to this refrain, how did it come to this? It's like we're living in a landslide. He didn't do it in a way that clangs you over the head with you know, he wasn't a sort of eco warrior wanting to ram it down your throat or anything, but it it kind of percolates really beautifully through the music. Hollywood, which is uh, a kind of psychedelic track, really, with a bit of a 90s sheen to it, with some wonderful textures and just great 60s psych kind of sounds and keyboards with this great uh, atmospheric outro where you can hear this... Uh, female person just in, you know intoning this this strange poem and um all kinds of reverb and effects coming to bear on it it's quite a difficult balancing trick i think when you're essentially it's kind of overproduction but you make it sound like it's not overproduction you make it sound as if the the production is serving the song i think that's what carl was so great at doing and hollywood is a, is a is a really good example of that um, some heavier tracks on the record as well. You've got Give It All Away, which um, is quite a heavy, psyche kind of song. Uh, but then some more kind of light, playful R&B touches coming through. The track Rescue Me, uh, which references the Fontella uh, bass, bass song from the 60s, the old uh, soul song. Not musically, but just in its title. 
Um, shades of Prince in that song, definitely, you know, using drum machines, along with a live drummer. Just, you know, brilliant. Sooner or Later is a very melancholy pop song with a um, harmonica part in it and Carl doing this uh, this voice, really, which was a, a strange kind of mixture. It was Bob Dylan mixed with Mick Jagger and Paul McCartney and maybe a couple of other influences coming through, maybe a bit of Todd Rundgren. The album just has a lovely flow to it. You know, it kind of builds up in the second half. You get the song Sunshine, which is this wonderful just this wonderful, gorgeous, atmospheric song. And then All I Gave is this very upbeat song. Um, you know, a bit of a kind of sunshine pop vibe coming through. Never that far away from the 1960s influences. So, um, yeah, just very, very sad to hear about Carl. I think he was only 66. And I know uh, a fair few years ago now he had a very serious medical condition, I think it was a brain embolism of some kind, but he had made a recovery from that and he had gone on tour and um, he was working on new material. I'd been in touch with him on his Facebook page, this is what I explained in my video five years ago where he had, I'd had a sort of short exchange with him and he'd said he was going to be recording some new music so we're going to have to wait and see now whether he got um, he got very far down the road with that because obviously we, you know, we've not had a new World Party album for a number of years but um, if you've not heard this album, if you've not heard any of World Party's records, uh, you should do so immediately. But this is definitely a good one to start with. Goodbye Jumbo, lots of people will say that's the one to start with. I guess it is the most high profile one. Strangely enough, because it wasn't actually as commercially successful as this one. But um, at a pinch, I might just say it's my favourite album of the 1990s. And um, I just love the songwriting, I love the production, I love Carl's voice. Could be a little bit derivative at times. You could argue that you know he did wear his influences on his sleeve, but I think he found a way of synthesising that and turning it into something that was uniquely his own. So I don't want to go on too long uh, today because um, you know I don't want this to be a, some big huge tribute, but um, I did want to come on and uh, pay my respects to Carl really and to say thanks for the music. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Day.